Good morning, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this video is about gear. Uh, the reason it's about gear is because I've changed my gear quite a bit recently. As those of you that have been following the channel for any time will have known, I've been using Sony a7R4 and prior to that a7R3 and then a7R2. But I've recently upgraded to the Sony A1, which is uh, a strange thing for someone that's primarily a landscape photographer to do. But I'll explain why. And for those of you that have seen some of the recent videos, you'll know some of the logic behind why I've done this. But I've downsized quite a bit, um, partly because I've just cluttering up with gear and I thought, no, this is silly. And I've rationalized my lenses and my camera. So I'll first go through the vlogging equipment. This is my DJI Pocket 2 with the extender on, which allows it to be wireless to my phone and various other things. And this is a lovely little 4K camera. It's very easy to have with you. It's not very heavy. It doesn't take much space up and it produces excellent results. So that sits in this little tiny protector and it has this rather nice Bluetooth wireless microphone with muff on which obviously stops the wind noise and everything and on the bottom of that i've got a peak designs tripod um, plate adapter which goes into the bottom or into the top of my peak designs carbon fiber tripod i'll cover that in a minute so that is my vlogging equipment i'm actually vlogging on my iphone at the moment because i couldn't be showing you these as well i've also got the extendable arm which the pocket two fits in and this allows me to sort of have a bit more distance when I'm vlogging and also I can extend this and show you uh, closer to the ground or push through objects like holes in trees and things like that sort of make the videos a bit more interesting so those are my main vlogging bits of equipment here and um, again you'll notice I've also got a Peak Designs uh, tripod adapter plate on there as well i've got quite a few of those now going on to the tripod i had a sirui uh, 24 12 xl which you've seen in previous videos which i really love but i'm downsizing the equipment and i just don't want the clutter and the weight so i've having had this peak designs carbon fiber tripod now for about three months i'm very very impressed with this um yeah it's not quite as stable especially in strong winds as the other tripod would have been but we'll come to that in a minute and again it comes back to my choice of moving across to the sony a1 but this is a lovely light and pretty effective tripod i've got the obviously the peak designs tripod head on here which if i just show you is a curious sort of ball arrangement you slacken this locking ring here and then it allows it to move around pretty much in virtually every direction as a ball head would I'm not a great lover of ball heads generally, but as a basic unit, that is okay. But as those of you that have been watching the channel for some time will remember, I'm also a great fan of this uh, geared ball, oh, sorry, geared head, not ball head. And to make this work with this rather than the old Surrey tripod that it went on, I've fitted a Peak Designs um, base plate to that, which means this now can on top of the Peak Designs tripod. So I've now got a geared head, which I love. And that is obviously on this tripod here. I also have another tripod head, which gets used infrequently, but it sort of supports my video activities. And again, this little fluid movie or video head that I've got has also got a Peak Designs adapter plate on here, which means when I want to use it, I can just lock it into place on top of the tripod. And then I've got this really nice fluid and nice dampened motion. So if I want to produce some nice smooth video, I can put the camera on here. And obviously with this head, I've got that ability. So I've got all the options covered here and I don't always take these two heads with me when I go out. It depends very much what I'm going to do, but that covers the tripod. So I'm very pleased with this little tripod. It really, I know they're not cheap, but I tend to feel that in a lot of cases you get what you pay for and I'm certainly impressed with this, the build quality, how light it is, how well designed, well thought out it is. So I won't rabbit on about that any longer. Now I'll move across now to the camera bag. Now this camera bag is a low pro and it's a sling style bag and 
This is one of the smallest. I think this is a 250. No, it's a 150 all weather. So in the bottom, it's got a, a cover behind this zip that you can extend over the whole of the bag to sort of keep the weather out. Now, in this particular bag, what I can easily get in here is to show you, I've got, let me take those cloths out. I'm a great fan of these microfiber cloths. They're excellent padding, protection, and just useful to have with you. In here, in the bottom part, I've got the Sony A1, and on it, I've got the 75 to 300 lens. Now, if I just take that out, that fits beautifully in there. And the other two lenses I've got, and I really wanted to only have two lenses, but I have actually settled for three of them. I've sold my G Master lenses because these Tamron lenses that I've moved across to, which are part of the Tamron RXD range, DI RXD here. This is the 17 to 28, which gives me pretty much like a 16 to 35. It's a two point eight lens. It is made out of uh, polycarbonate of some sort, uh, and it's very light, but the image quality is uh, probably just a fraction less than the G Masters, but to be quite blunt, I haven't noticed it. The other lens I've got, which is pretty much the main lens I have on the camera most of the time, is this Tamron. It's a 28 to 200, and it goes 28 to 56. And that's a beauty, again, it's plastic and it's really very light and it's got this really smooth extending action and it's waterproof and sealed and it's got a rubber gasket on here, which my Sony lenses didn't have, I'm surprised to find, but um, this is a really nice little lens. It, it's not heavy, it fits on the camera, it's pretty much a do everything. And again, the image quality is really good. I'm more than chuffed with it. And I, I can speak from experience because clearly having had high resolution Sony's and also um, Sony's best glass, the G Master lenses. I think if I say that um, I can more than live with these, then there's a reason for that. They are really very good. I'm just looking outside. It's a bit of an odd day today. It's uh, Easter Monday, but it's, it's snowing. Well, it's just fine. There's a bit of snow coming down. This is my Sony A1 and on it, I've got the 75 to 300 Tamron lens as well. Um, and these three lenses not only completely fit in here because the two lenses which are not on the camera can both fit in this top section and the bottom section has got that uh, section where the camera fits in like so across the base of it and in there also i've got a set of extension rings which if i want to do some macro i can do and a couple of places i can store uh, batteries so that's pretty much all that's here but on the front, I've got this Peak Designs connector, which allows me just to, because the camera's got a Peak Designs, I'm not uh, I'm not selling Peak Designs, I just like well-designed things, and that is well-designed. That will, with the camera, if I can get it on properly, sit in this clip, he says. But it won't do it for me today. Um, that slots in there, pretty much. Well, it's supposed to, but it's not at the moment. I'm not quite sure why. I'll have to look into that later. Probably over tighten or something somewhere. But the camera sits locked into that normally. Uh, so it, if I don't want it in the bag and I want it for quick access, I can just clip it into here. Something into there like so. So that's the bag. And there's a little pouch at the front. And in the little pouch, we've got a couple of filters. I've got a circular polarizer and I've also got a variable ND. I rarely use NDs and the ones that I had from K's before the magnetic filters, I've sold them on eBay. And for a fraction of the price, I've bought the two main filters I ever need, which is a polarizer. If you need a polarizer, there's no substitute. You can't do anything that a polarizer can do in post adequately. And if I want to slow things down for sort of drag some water or something on a waterfall, I've got a variable ND so I can slow things down. So that's all that lives in this part, along with a spare battery and this Sony remote control unit, which um, sits all nicely in there like that. So that's really quite a small package and I've got everything I need with me. And if I want to take the tripod, I can just pop it into the side and put a, a strap on here and actually hold it on the side of the bag and it fits rather nicely, as you can see from there. The bag is just about the same height as the tripod, so that's quite a neat setup to have all that gear with me and only have a small, a really small bag, basically. 
So that's the bag. That's what goes in it. I've discussed the lenses and I can't do anything more than recommend these Tamron lenses. Uh, they used to be the underdog in the camera world and they've obviously changed things around and now they're not. And these are exceptionally nice lenses. The A1, why did I buy such an expensive professional camera? Primarily because it has very good high ISO performance. It's slightly less resolution at 50 megapixels compared to my A7R4, which was 62. But to be blunt, that doesn't really matter. What matters to me more is that I get a lot of um, uh, dynamic range from the sensor at above normal ISO. And what I'm finding with this, and I did a video about high ISO landscape photography a few weeks back, where I took this up into the woods and it was really windy. And obviously being really windy, that meant that the trees were moving and I wanted to stop the motion. So I had to use quite a high shutter speed, which of course, in a relatively dark environment like a wooded area, meant that the ISO had to go up quite a bit. And I, I was finding, I was getting uh, ISO 3200 images that were perfectly usable. No one would complain about the quality. And if you then post-process them in Topaz Denoise or one of those AI type applications, the image quality just goes up and up and up. And I see no reason to stick down at ISO 50 or ISO 100, 150 for a lot of what I do now. So that's the main driver for getting this camera. Uh, there are some other reasons I got it as well, but I, I won't bore you with those. It's primarily the image quality from high ISO images that was my main drive. And as I say, I've bought these three Tamron lenses and between these three well, lenses plus this body, I feel I can cover most things. I don't feel that I'm missing anything by not having the 100 to 400, which was a big heavy beast. It wouldn't fit in that bag. And when it was on the camera, it was heavy. Uh, the two other uh, G Master lenses I had were bigger and heavier and more expensive. I've effectively sold those on eBay uh, to various people. And I've been able to buy these lenses for less than I actually got secondhand for my um, original Sony lenses, which is all to the good from my perspective. So I've downsized things quite a bit and I'm really pleased with that. So that's pretty much it. Um, in terms of things other than cameras, I have two 4K monitors here and I have the little iMac mini, which is down there in the corner. Sorry, not iMac mini. It's a Mac mini M1, which there's another video uh, a few weeks back I did about how good that is. I also bought, bought a, a MacBook Air M1 um, and that one is sitting over there and that goes with me if I go out anywhere. And it's basically the same configuration as this, but with less SSD in it. So it's as capable in terms of editing video production as this one is but i just don't need the storage on that when i go away it's only got the small disk in so it's a cheaper alternative and that is a nice nice thing and what's um, i find startling about this move to macintosh is that they're silent there's no fans in them so there's no noise and it's amazing how much that is relaxing because you you, know, you you just have this background noise with a normal PC, a whirring, or even laptops are whirring and the likes from the fans. And although it's not very loud, it, it's, it can be quite intrusive. And I'm finding it really ple quite pleasant to have these two effectively silent machines. The monitors are kicked off there. So, um, yeah, so that's it. Um, I hope you found this informative. I'm going to be out with the, the A1 quite a bit over the next few months, and I'll put it through more of its paces, and we'll see where we go from there. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little change in my lineup, gear lineup. Um, I didn't really want to spend as much money as this body cost me, but I could see the advantages were good from my point of view. I nearly got the Fujifilm GFX 100S, the little new baby version. Um, but I realized I can get 100 megapixels out of this. This has got pixel shift. If I want to do that, I can do that. Or I can just create a pano image and get a 100 megapixels or 200 megapixel image with this camera as well, or even more. So it would have been nice to have had that, but it's medium format. I don't think the sensor does anything better than this one can do. And I pretty much, yeah, some people might argue, but I think this is good enough, certainly for my needs. 
and I'm quite happy with this. Uh, so moving forward, I don't know how long I'll keep it. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next video.